Hi, my name is Manuel Likani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today, we continue our discussion on macro osteoperforation. If you remember from previous discussion, we demonstrated that in response to application of small perforation on the bone, the magnitude of inflammatory markers in the area increases that is accompanied with the increase in the number of the osteoclast and production of a small osteopenia around the target tooth, which increased the rate of tooth movement in response to application of orthodontic forces. However, this simple biological principle has been misunderstood in research community. While many researchers funded increasing the rate of tooth movement in response to application of macroosteoperforation, uh, some researchers were not able to show clinical significance between the control group and experimental group when they apply macroosteoperforation. Why this difference exists? This difference exists if you are ignoring three important variables. The first variables is the patient-related variables. Patients based on their age, gender, and genetic background respond differently to the trauma. It is clear that the rate of tooth movement in children and adults is different. Therefore, when we are selecting our samples to study the effect of macroosteoperforation, the gap age on our samples can affect or obscure the result of our clinical studies. Similar is the gender and genetic background of our patients. You can see the importance of these factors in changing the result of the study when you're comparing the animal studies with human studies. In animal studies that we control the age, sex, and genetic background of the animals, almost in every study, they demonstrate significant increase in rate of tooth movement in response to the trauma. However, in human studies, when we are ignoring these three important factors, the confusion starts. The second variables that can affect the result of our study is the magnitude of trauma. It is known biologically that if you apply higher magnitude of trauma, the amount of inflammatory markers in the area will be much more than if you apply lower magnitude of trauma. That has been known for centuries in medicine and dentistry. Therefore, when we are doing the clinical study, we also need to pay attention to the number of perforation. To understand this important point, let's look at one experiment that was conducted with CTOR team. They ask exactly the same question. Does the magnitude of the trauma change the result of the study? What happens if we apply only one perforation and compare that if we are applying four perforation? So how that affect the inflammatory markers level and the rate of tooth movement? You guess correctly. In response to one perforation, the amount of the inflammatory markers were not significantly higher than the group that only received orthodontic forces. On the other hand, in the group that received four perforation in addition to orthodontic forces, the amount of inflammatory markers were higher. In response to that increase in level of inflammatory markers, the rate of tooth movement was also significantly higher. The third factor that can affect the result of the clinical trials is the answer to this question. In response to application of macroosteoperforations, how long the inflammatory markers stay up in the area? To answer these questions, again, researcher at CITOR Academy conducted a study. In the experimental group that received the perforation in addition to orthodontic forces, the inflammatory markers stay up until 28 days. But around 28 days, the researcher could not find significant difference between the experimental group and control group. This study is very important because it tells us a very important clinical tip. If we wanted to apply perforation to increase the rate of tooth movement, we need to know the effect of the perforation only is high during the 
first month of the application. If we want to use this technique to increase the rate of tooth movement, we should apply the perforation every month or at least every other month. This factor can explain why in many of clinical studies that they studied the rate of tooth movement for a longer duration, for example, four or five months, but applied the macro perforation only on the first month, could not see the difference between the experimental group and control group. By second month, we know that the inflammatory markers level are low and the bone repair process start, which can obscure the result of the study. Bottom line, the principle of biology should not be questioned. In response to the trauma, there is an increase in inflammatory markers, recruitment of osteoclast, localized osteopenia, and therefore increasing the rate of bone remodeling that can help to increase the rate of tooth movement. This should not be the question. The question is how to optimize these biological principles to increase the rate of tooth movement for our patient when we need it. To summarize our discussion today, it is very important that when we are applying macroosteoperforation to pay attention to the difference between our patient. While in some patients, a smaller number of perforation can increase the rate of tooth movement, some other patient, based on their bone density, they require higher number of the perforation. Also, the bone density around the tooth is not homogeneous. Some people have higher density in certain area than the others. Therefore, the location of the perforation should optimize based on the patient's anatomy. Another factor that we should not forget is if you are planning to use this technique to increase the rate of tooth movement, to use it frequently. We should monitor the rate of tooth movement in our patient and optimize all these factors based on the patient's need. We require individualized protocol for each patient. We cannot use one technique that applies to all patients. I hope you enjoyed this session of Sutor channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.